Pierre Poilievre taps into the emotional need for security, fairness, and hope by framing issues as a stark choice between the current government's decline and recovery through conservative policies. His focus on authenticity and action, coupled with a conservative approach to practical and responsible governance, resonates with those feeling helpless and frustrated with the status quo. So the question that Jagmeet Singh has been asked 31 times in the last week, and he has refused to answer, is whether he will vote non-confidence to trigger a carbon tax election. Now why is that? Well, let's just inspect the timing here for a second. He did his video two days before voting started in those by-elections, trying to trick people into thinking he was no longer part of the coalition. The by-elections will be held on Monday, after which he can just change his mind and go back to voting to keep Trudeau in power. So I have an announcement and a challenge. I'm announcing that common sense conservatives will put forward a non-confidence motion at the earliest possible opportunity. And I'm asking Jagmeet Singh and the NDP to commit unequivocally before Monday's by-elections. Will they vote non-confidence to bring down the costly coalition and trigger a carbon tax election? Or will Jagmeet Singh sell out Canadians again? Which will it be? It's put up or shut up time for the NDP. There will be a carbon tax election. And in it, Canadians will decide whether they keep the NDP Liberals in power to tax your food, punish your work, double your housing costs, unleash crime, chaos, drugs, and disorder on our streets. Will they vote for a 61 cent a liter carbon tax? Or will they elect a common sense conservative government that will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime? And we need to bring them down now because otherwise carbon tax Carney's agenda will predominate. Poilievre's motion for no confidence and his challenge to Jagmeet Singh embody the conservative commitment to holding government leaders accountable by demanding clarity on whether the NDP will support a no confidence motion. Poilivra addresses public desires for honesty and transparency. He emphasizes that citizens deserve to know where their representatives stand, especially on impactful policies like the carbon tax. His perspective is that the government should act in the best interests of its people and that those in power must take responsibility for policies perceived as harmful. Poilivra's investigation into the costly competition strikes a chord with those who see the current government's policies as economically damaging and misaligned with their values. By framing the carbon tax election as an economic issue, he appeals to the belief that high taxes burden citizens and stifle economic growth. For Poilivra, the carbon tax isn't just a fiscal problem. It's a moral one, as it affects Canadians' cost of living, including food and housing. This reflects the public's fear of economic instability and excessive government intervention. His reference to taxing your food, punching your work, doubling your housing costs captures the unfairness many feel under government regulations. It serves as an emotional trigger for public frustration over rising living expenses, reinforcing conservative ideals of financial responsibility and economic freedom. Poilievre's mention of Crime, chaos, drugs, and disorder on our streets appeals to conservative values of law and order, emphasizing that a functional society must enforce laws to ensure safety and stability. By portraying the current government as contributing to confusion and the erosion of traditional values, he underscores the need for governance that maintains social cohesion and public order.